Remember that I have the right to do anything to anybody. Truly chilling and disturbing, to say the least, these words seem as if they were pulled from the pages of a Stephen King novel. However, the truth is far more real and terrifying. The Roman Emperor Gaius Caesar, commonly known as Caligula, coined and constantly uttered this phrase, and held the meaning deep in his heart, and eventually it was ingrained into his psyche. Despite the horrendous crimes against humanity he committed, Caligula wasn't born so evil, so vile, so corrupt. Born Gaius Caesar Germanicus on August 31st of 12 Anno Domini, not much is known of his demeanor as a baby, or whether it could have been an indicator of the madness to come. A doting father, Germanicus Julius Caesar, who from this point would be referred to simply as Germanicus, would keep the young Caesar by his side at his post on the Rhine. Germanicus and his wife Agrippina the Elder would dress him in miniature soldiers' uniforms, which his soldiers found amusing and, at points, laughable. They would call him Caligula, meaning Little Soldier's Boot, a nickname he would grow to despise. In the year 19 Anno Domini, Germanicus was presumably poisoned while returning from a trip to Egypt and perished. Agrippina stated that the sitting emperor Tiberius had ordered the murder of Germanicus, his own adopted son, causing some political tension and unrest. In the year 29, Agrippina was exiled by Tiberius after his own heir died, and hers were thrust into the line of succession. The next year, her son Drusus was imprisoned by Tiberius, and by the year 33, both had died of starvation. His other brothers were sought out and executed by the hand of Tiberius, as they were a political rival to his own sons. The loss of his father, mother, and brothers may have sparked Caligula's descent into madness. Of the nine children between Germanicus and Agrippina the Elder, only three daughters and one son survived. That son was Caligula himself, and he was within reach of ultimate power. Tiberius had adopted Caligula in the year 32, and made his cousin Gemellus an equal heir to the throne. While in Tiberius' care, Caligula was indulged in his most disturbing desires, stating he was nursing a viper in Rome's bosom. Six years later, Tiberius had died, and the battle for the throne was not exactly a battle. Marco, a prefect of the Praetorian Guard, had secured Caligula's position as the Emperor of Rome. After his rise to power, he ordered the execution of both Gemellus and Mark, the two men to which he owed his rise to power. Aside from the execution of the two men who enabled his regime, his early reign proved rather well met, as he made plans to reform the broken political system and recalled exiles back to their homeland, as well as pardoning their various treasons. However, within a few months, the young emperor had fallen ill with a grave disease. He soon recovered from his physical illnesses. However, his mental illness had been amplified permanently. Some light-hearted examples of his madness include requisitioning hundreds of merchant ships to create a floating bridge across the Bay of Bali, on which he planned to ride his horse across twice over. He would order his soldiers to plunder the seas by collecting seashells in their helmets, and he even took the idea of making his horse a consul into consideration. However, these seemingly idiotic and menial lapses of judgment were far from what gained his infamy, and his god complex further justified the vile, malignant actions he took. Caligula would force high-ranking senators to run in front of his chariot for miles on end, and those who couldn't keep up were trampled under the sharp hooves of the horses pulling it. He would seduce the wives of his allies, and was rumored to have rather odd relations with his sisters. Due to the amount of hair on his body and the fact that he was tall in stature, he made it a capital offense to even mention a goat in his presence. He would practice his menacing facial expressions in the mirror daily, as he meant to be feared, not loved. During one particular sacrifice to appease the gods in which he partook, Caligula lifted his weapon, presumably to slaughter the lamb, but instead quickly turned around and lodged the weapon into a priest who succumbed to his fatal wounds. His other trespasses shall not be mentioned here due to the sheer disturbing nature of his actions. 
At this point, it was clear to the Roman people that something had to be done about this man and his abhorrent nature. The Praetorian Guard and the Senate conspired against the mad tyrant, leading to his death by stabbing in the year 41. The insurrection was led by Cassius Chiria, who also ordered the stabbing of Caligula's wife and daughter. As Cassius Dio, the biographer of the mad tyrant, stated, he learned by actual experience that he is no god. The life of this horrible man serves as a reminder of how cruel the human race can actually be at its worst. However, the worst was still yet to come, as an even worse madman would succeed him just 13 short years after his death.